When the 2022 season began, Ferrari came out of the gates hot and fast, showing everybody that the team from Maranello is now ready to win a title. But as the season progressed, started to show their true colors with a succession of poor strategy calls and reliability issues that saw their once healthy lead over Red Bull slowly disappear. And now that Red Bull's Max Verstappen has the opportunity to wrap things up in the Drivers' Championship within the next two races, how is Ferrari feeling about wasting another season where they could have won it all? How are the drivers feeling about Ferrari as a whole? And who is the ex-FIA president that has been reported to replace Ferrari's current team boss, Mattia Binotto? Well, let's talk about it then. But before we do, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our latest uploads. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. It has been more than a decade now since the team from Maranello won it all. In fact, we would have to go as far back as 2004 for the last time Ferrari won both Drivers' and Constructors' Championships in one season, and that was the final season that the great Michael Schumacher won for Ferrari. And recently, team boss Mattia Bonato would be asked about what the team is lacking in its quest to get back to their glory days during the Schumacher era. And to this, Mattia would respond with, it is no longer enough to do your homework well. To win, you have to keep progressing and improving. And to do that, we have to give 120%, if not 130%, said Binotto. Since the team's horrid strategy call in Hungary, many of the Tifosi have called out Binotto, saying that the team has to make a change if they want to get back to their winning ways. But Ferrari's chairman, John Alkin, has reinforced his trust in Bonato ahead of the team's race in Monza, although would also warn him that mistakes cannot happen on a regular basis, which left the door open on the possibility of Bonato's firing should the trend continue. This naturally leads to speculations as to who could replace Mattia should Ferrari decide to move on. And speculations say that former Ferrari team boss Jean Tote would be the clear favorite should the spot open up, but as expected, Tote would wave away any links between him and Ferrari by saying, I would doubt that is real news. There is a lot of news underneath it that is not true. I had breakfast in Turin with Andrea Agnelli, many saw me and thought that I would also work with Juventus. It's obvious that when I was president of the FIA, I was often with John Elkin, and we talked about Ferrari's ambitions, but there is a difference between talking, sharing hope, and working together. I think the chapters are designed to pass from one to the next. Tote would then be asked if he had any advice for Mattia, since he himself has experienced the same scrutiny during his time as Ferrari's team boss. Every era is different. I don't want to give advice. It's easy to give advice. The only thing I can say is to resist, said Tote. And then, now Ferrari is doing very well. It seems to me that people are not fully aware of that. Ferrari is back to win. I think everybody, well, almost everybody, we would like to see Ferrari winning championships, not just a few races. We can hope for that for next year, because this year I don't think it's possible anymore. But to win, you need excellence at all levels. That's hard to achieve, and even harder to maintain. And arguably the driver who has taken the brunt of it all is Charles Leclerc, who was once the runaway favorite to win the Drivers' Championship this season. But after strategic blunders and reliability mishaps, the Monegasque driver now has to settle for a P2 finish at best. And as we head to Singapore this weekend, Leclerc would share the team's expectations on race day at Marina Bay and next season as well. Just extract the maximum out of the car and show that we have grown from the mistakes we've done this year, and just try to execute the weekends perfectly, and hopefully having a win on Sunday," said Leclerc. Since the summer break, Red Bull seems to have made another step forward in terms of its competitiveness. Usually this season, we've been strongest in qualifying, but in the race, for various reasons, we've let points slip away. If we want to aim much higher next year, 
We have to always strive to be perfect, and we want to use these last six races to now start preparing for next year. But with that, the 24-year-old driver would downplay the notion that the track in Singapore caters to Ferrari's strengths. I don't know, but I hope so, said Leclerc. I love this track, though. It's one of my favorites with Baku and Monaco, all street tracks. So yeah, I was missing being here and I'm really happy to be back here. His teammate Carlos Sainz would also agree to what Charles had to say by saying, If they, Red Bull, think we're going to be competitive, imagine what we think how they're going to be. If they've won the last five or six races, said Sainz, I think we can bring the fight, especially in qualifying. And it's a track where, in the race, if you're ahead, then you can stand a bigger chance of winning the race than what we did in Monza or Spa when we were starting to get ahead of them. So we're going to give it our best shot, trying to nail the qualifying and see what we can do in the race. Carlos would then proceed to talk about just how grueling the Singaporean Grand Prix is and that this is the only race in the calendar that he specifically trains for during his winter training. When I start training in January and February, I never think about the first race of the season. It's this one, said Carlos, because this is where you face the hardest conditions. There are other races with very high temperatures, but only here is the humidity suffocating, and that, combined with the fact the track runs anti-clockwise, makes it particularly tiring on the neck. Added to that, the track is very bumpy, and there you have the full picture. It's not just physical, it's also mentally demanding, because you battle the last 10 laps or so with your mind as much as your muscles. The walls are very close and at street circuits. That's always a challenge within a challenge. But above all, we like it so much because it is so difficult. Then there are also so many variables. The weather can always play a part, and you can't rule out the chance of rain, while the safety car can mix up the order at any moment. Are we the favorites? I'd say not, but I expect we'll be able to fight at the front. And to add on to what Carlos has to think about on race day, the Spanish driver has been penalized three times now for unsafe releases in the pit lane and is now in danger of receiving a race ban. But Carlos would recently make a case that the FIA has to do something about circuits that have tight pit lanes and calling them a safety concern. It was clearly safe with Fernando, but then I had to hit the brakes to not hit a McLaren mechanic that ran into my exit lane, and it was this braking that generated the unsafe release, if you can call it unsafe," Sainz told Motorsport.com. I was clearly frustrated by it because I thought I'd saved someone's life and not generated a dangerous situation. I think it's something that is not talked about enough, that we go to pit lanes during the year that are definitely too tight and we need to improve safety for the mechanics, because we forget that those people wearing suits and helmets during the pit stops are in the middle of cars going at 80 kilometers per hour, and they are centimeters apart from incidents and from very dangerous situations. And there you have it, guys. So, do you think we will be seeing a change at Ferrari this offseason? Will the team still be a legitimate contender next year? And what are your thoughts about Carlos calling the FIA to widen pit lanes at certain racetracks? Let us know in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't.